Greetings fellow humans, Bat Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at another Red Dragon, the Elf Pro. Now I previously reviewed the standard Elf. This is one of Red Dragon's first, I believe this one's the second or the third. I, I don't know what order exactly they come out in. I'm thinking of just the order that I've received them in. But uh, this is actually for the price, I thought. It was a pretty good um, keyboard. Sounds decent stock. Um, is well dampened. And I think it's going to lend itself to some good modability. It is on my list to come back to um, to mod. So I'll have to... Um, as I see that the construction appears to be very similar. I'm thinking this one just has the uh, battery. But it also has some different switches. And some transparent keycaps. As well as what looks like a might be a translucent case we'll have to see but i'll go ahead and share a link for my original elf review and today we'll go ahead and take a look at the elf pro from red dragon as always uh, this keyboard was sent out to me by red dragon in exchange for my honest review uh, they have always been very um, thankful that i'm honest yet not mean about it and i do my best to do that i'm not trying to you know i understand that a team of designers you know people put some effort into this so uh, each product I feel you know deserves you know uh, its fair shot but obviously if I find things that I think are issues I am going to point that out but I do my best to do it in a you know non patronizing way I you know things happen projects you know can run over time or run out of money or deadlines be moved up or anything that can happen in you know the business world so i appreciate when companies uh, work with me and send me out products it gives me the ability to uh, review more products as well as remain honest about the products that i'm reviewing anyway so today we're taking a look at the elf pro it is a 75 percent without a knob which is almost rare nowadays because so many keyboards seem to just add a knob and or a screen but it's a regular 75%, uh, slightly exploded arrow cluster, as well as the navigation row um, with the delete button where you would usually have the knob. And got some clear, I'm going to guess they're PC keycaps. Um, it is a hot swappable. It is okay, so it is a, a transparent um, PC plastic, a uh, PC material with clear keycaps and clear switches. Uh, and as with the um, regular ELF, this uh, is also a gasket mounted keyboard so uh, these are the first few that have been coming out from red dragon as gasket mounted which is a, a very welcome change and if i'm not mistaken i believe it also has a polycarbonate plate all right before taking a look at the keyboard let's see what we have in the box we have a usb c with an elbow to a usb c as well as a USB-C to USB-A adapter with a tail and a Velcro strap. We have the user manual. We have a standard wire and keycap and switch puller with the hole for your finger to provide more leverage. And we also have a box of spare switches, which um, I gotta say, I always appreciate when they include some extra switches and feed dogs. Um, you never know when something could go wrong. Having a spare is always a good thing. All right, so we have some crystal or clear switches here. Uh, they are badged with Red Dragon. So, oh wow, they actually sound pretty good. And they actually appear to be long pull, perhaps 3.8 millimeter travel. Huh. They're very, it's very light spring and it has a nice, it's sharp yet soft, not harsh bottom out and absolutely no pain. Huh. Well, that is very interesting indeed. Very interesting. With the original Elf, there's also another Red Dragon Switch. They're not really putting out the names to a lot of these, 
So I don't really know what it is. It's a bit of a heavier linear, but again, it has no uh, no ping whatsoever, and it matches bento, um, salmon, a couple of different uh, colorways. So it's uh, it's very interesting. I, I like what Red Dragon's doing. Keep it up, Red Dragon. It's appreciated. And just like the, um, I remember the elf was also um, wrapped up like this. It is, it is shrunk wrap almost with some very strong plastic. Let's go ahead and take that off. Well, no one's going to blame Red Dragon for not properly protecting their keyboards. <laughs> that uh, it was, a, it was a bit of work to take it off. But yes, I, we see similar construction as with the um, regular ELF. It does have a nice, uh, I want to say it's silicone rubber pad, but I haven't opened these up yet, so I'm not quite sure. Uh, and it does have four screws on the top and four on the bottom so that it can be opened up. So taking a look at it off the bat, it is very, very, very shiny, um, glossy. It's That's glossy, that's what it is. Um, it is uh, translucent, I wouldn't say necessarily fully transparent, and it has a, a black tint to it. Obviously, it's darker where it's overlapping. I, it does look like it's overlapping, uh, but again, I won't know for sure until I open it up. We do have uh, three sets of kick-out feet. We also have a pocket on the side for the 2.4 gigahertz receiver. And it does say Red Dragon on it, so good. It'll be easy to find what it goes to. And on the other side, we have the USB-C port with the switches for 2.4 and Bluetooth. So let's go ahead and turn that on and see what the lights look like. All right, well, obviously it is very bright. <laughs> there are a lot of colors here. Let me see what this. Obviously it has some really nice bright keys. Um, these PC keycaps do appear to be OEM. So, and we are dealing with north facing LEDs. All right, so, oh, that brought the switch with it. Again, we've got these clear Red Dragon, uh, I'd say at most a 40 gram spring, but very nice linears that have a zero ping. And these keycaps that are polycarbonate as well, and they feel nice and thick. Oh wow, 1.4. That's decent, especially for them being polycarbonate. I thought they were a little bit thicker because I've gotten a hold of some keyboards with polycarbonate keycaps before, but they were really thin and you could bend them really easy. And these, I mean, there's a little give, but I'm not going to be able to bend this. Not with my bare hand, anyway. So let's see what we've got here for the stabilizers. Oh, wow. These are... Oh, there's the tiniest amount of wiggle, but they are on there quite, quite tight. Very tight, indeed. Let's see. Yeah, there's uh, definitely good tolerances there. And we can... Uh, look over and see that they are lubricated but they're not like dripping in grease which is great i don't know how many times it's either no grease or just way too much grease like enough grease on one set of stabilizers for all the stabilizers on the keyboard so that's definitely nice to see um i always like to check but usually not going to find the ability to, to mount um uh, screw and stabilizers on Red Dragon keyboards. Now we do have uh, what looks like an IXPE pad in white, and we do have what appears to be a silicone rubber between the integrated PC plate and the PCB. And then, of course, we have our big silicone layer or silicone dampener for the bottom of the case so so we seem to have a, a pretty a solid keyboard now let's check out the flex real quick now that we have lights we can actually see and it has oh, roughly I would say about 
three millimeters of travel, maybe four. So it's not going to be extremely bouncy or flexy, but we do have a gasket mount. So I'll be honest, when I first started coming across these transparent keyboards, I my first reaction was they're gimmicky. But I have been using another one for a little while, and <laughs> I actually like it. It's on a secondary PC. It's not one that I use every day, but um, I don't know. I just kind of get a kick out of it. Yes, the letters you can't really see, but when I'm dealing with a profile or a layout that I pretty much already know, um, I mean, these are very sensible. So it's usually not that hard just to you know feel my way around. So I was going to pull out some keycaps and make an example. Uh, there are keycaps that I think there are some keycaps that I think would work great. And I've seen them actually, I think I have, a I, I know I have a transparent one using those exact same keycaps. They're the soda keycaps originally, I think from hex gears, if I'm not mistaken, but they're clear. They do have a tint to them. So in this case, you know, these have a blackish, you know, translucency to them, but basically black with a low alpha channel. So that's why you can see through. Um, but the top of them, have a I've seen them in different colors but for the soda ones that I'm thinking of have the white basically a, a layer of white PVT and then they do the double shot through that which is basically just opening up clear or not clear but whatever the the underlying color is to shine through but there's the white to provide the contrast so you still got the clear they're, they're kind of like putting caps but just the top has a you know non-transparent color and it's cut out for what's to be read so it's kind of like a inverse of how the keycaps on this are done and those are easy to be read so but that's not saying that there's anything wrong with this i'm just that's just my thought on it um but uh i can't recall the the model off the top of my head right now oh well anyway um these have a cool little i don't know i mean this is definitely gamer um it's definitely directed at gamers i would say because it has ready for battle so i mean most games are going to have some sort of you know battle to overcome or actual you know first person shooter you know and so the the font reflects it though I like it, even though it's more of a futuristic, it's bigger and it, it's almost centered. So for me, that's the font that I prefer. And I don't know, it looks kind of cool. Now, granted, when I come back to mod this, we like change out the keycaps, perhaps, but because I'm now I'm kind of thinking, what would these look like with, because I got a couple of different color sets of soda keycaps. I could, I was thinking of something, but uh, we'll see. We'll see when I get there. I don't want to make any promises, and if I start thinking about it too much, I'll want to start modding it right here. So, from from my initial impressions on this, I would say that not only is it a nice in stock gasket, seventy five percent, especially for you know those folks that just like I don't want a knob. I want you know an actual layout. Some people don't need it. Some people don't mind doing the, oh, those are the wrong keys, doing the um, multimedia keys, uh, you know, having to use the function for volume up, volume down, or maybe they don't even use it, you know. Who knows? But for having a solid keyboard that now, you know, again, it has a PC plate, it's an integrated PC plate, um, has very nice dampening, has um, switches that sound really nice. I mean, the keyboard itself, now as it stands stock, I don't think it sounds amazing, but I think it sounds great, especially if it's some, if it's keyboard that's gonna be used around other people and you don't want it to disturb them, it's not loud enough to where it's gonna, it's gonna be like, hey, you gotta get rid of that keyboard, change it out. But it's not, you know, completely quiet and muted. It has, it has a room voice level. So 
I think that it would be found acceptable in workplaces. And, and I mean, from the first Red Dragon I reviewed to, the, to this, I mean, there's so much evolution that has happened. And I continue, I mean, you can watch my videos. There's been past Red Dragon models that have been like, hey, I just, I don't know what, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Um, but I did my best to provide feedback, and they have told me that, you know, they watch my videos and they listen to the feedback that I have as well as, you know, the comment section. So I like to believe that, you know, myself or others, you know, have helped to kind of shape where they are right now because they're, they're just delivering some very good products for the money, for in-stock keyboards, for plastic. Because, I mean, don't get me wrong. And I don't know. I'll have to ask them. I wonder if they're planning for an aluminum. Now, I know they have a, a, a pressed aluminum kit, and I have it. And I've reviewed it before. I'll try to link to it if I can remember. But I wonder if they're thinking of, of a CNC. I don't think they're set up for that. But it'd be, it'd be interesting if they did go down that route. Um, but for whatever it's worth, they're, they're now starting to, in my opinion, climb up the ladder in as far as these stock pre-built keyboards go, um, because they just get better and better. I mean, this one is a wireless version of one that I like, but it's also the translucent version. Um, I love that it has the side pocket. I actually, in a lot of instances, prefer the side connection, but... I guess it depends on where I'm working. Um, but they include the cable with the tail in case, you know, I'm working on a laptop that doesn't have a USB-C port. So it's it's things like that that they're adding to their design that I quite like. And I'm finding it harder to find things that I find is a flaw. I mean, I can give you my nitpicks. Like, I'm not a big fan at all, and I've said this before, of having the... You know the, the the shift legends the sub legends on the keycaps be below the you know the key either to the side or above it yeah but below uh, i don't prefer it though in this one i can't really much see it with the lights on so <laughs> um but that's you know again me being nitpicky again you know doing an inverse with a solid color especially like with this gold that the gold had you know with at the top had like a gold infill and all of the writing was actually just a open, you know, or, or a window through, then I think that would look pretty cool. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of OEM profile keycaps, but for most people, this is going to be and feel familiar. So, like I said, the, the, the flaws, and I put those in big air quotes, that I would have to say they're not really, they're just being nitpicky. That's why I don't really focus on them. I just... I'm just, um, like I said, if I've helped for them to get here, even in the most minimum amount, I'm, I'm glad because they're like, they, like I said, they continue to, uh, release keyboards that, that are just top of their game for, for their price range and for what they are. I mean, I know they're considered a gaming company and yes, they have mice and they have other things for gaming. But the keyboards, they're, they're mechanical keyboards that I think a lot of enthusiasts like. And um, especially for the price. I mean, of course, they're not for everybody. But as a keyboard to get started, to get into it, um, I mean, I don't know how many of the K631s I've modded, the K530s. Uh, I've, and I've gotten them to sound really, really good. So, and those were when they were coming out, when they were released, like with no foam whatsoever. Um, and even some of the ones that had just Otemu hot sauce sockets, I still have, you know, with a little bit more work, but now and now they're coming to the point that is, you know, yes, they can be modded and they'll sound better, but it's not going to require a whole overhaul. It's just going to be minimum. Like this one, I could put the PET tape mod, pay maybe some polyfill and perhaps some different keycaps though, even with these keycaps, since they're 1.4 millimeter, you get this to sound a lot deeper and a lot nicer, but... Like I said, even for a lot of people, they're going to pull this out of the box and they're going to be happy with it because it sounds and feels nice. Just the specs. 
Today we're taking a look at the Red Dragon K649 Elf Pro. It is a three mode keyboard with USB-C, Bluetooth 3 and 5, as well as 2.4 gigahertz connectivity. It is also available in both a black or a white transparent PC case. This one is preloaded with a transparent custom linear switch from Red Dragon. Also includes translucent OEM polycarbonate keycaps. It is a gasket mounted PC plate and it comes very well dampened. The battery on this keyboard is 3000 milliamp hours and it weighs in at 958 grams fully loaded. The front chin of this keyboard sits at 18.5 millimeters and the raised bevel at 23.5 millimeters. Well, the back sits at 25.5 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of five degrees. Using the first set of fold-out feet will take the back up to 33.5 millimeters and an eight degree typing angle. Using the final set of fold-out feet, you will get a back height of 40 millimeters and a typing angle of 11 degrees. This keyboard MSRP is for $79.99. So in closing, um, I like where Red Dragon is going. I like um, this keyboard. I think it is a little overpriced at $79.99, being that there are a lot of aluminum kits that can be bought for this or just a little bit more. Now, granted, a lot of them are bare bone, but some of them are not. So, you know, you always got to weigh what's best for you. A lot of times people ask me, what keyboard should I buy? Without, you know, me knowing anything about what they want. Do they want an ISO ANSI? Do they need wireless? Do they, you know, want a low profile? Do they prefer tall keycaps? On and on and on. There's a lot of different things. So it's hard for me to say. I can, I can definitely say, okay, I think, you know, this one's better built or better value for that price. Um, and I can say what I would do in X situation, but it's hard for me to pick a keyboard for somebody else. Um, for some folks, that transparent look is something that they want. So I can see why it's a little bit more because a lot of these, I've seen, I know there's one transparent keyboard that's out there, the low free that's like 179. So it's, <laughs> It, this is definitely in comparison to that, then this is much better value. But I, I've got to say, I've, I just have to give Red Dragon props um, for them continuing to release some really nice keyboards that just, um, they deliver a nice experience and they're coming to the point where they're ready to go out of the box for the majority of people, I'd say 90% plus that you know want a mechanical keyboard because you know they want the rgb you know they know red dragon they you know already use their stuff um they want a gaming keyboard they're going to get this and i think they're going to be happy um it's a linear switch it sounds nice it's not overwhelming again for a lot of people i think this is probably going to be perfect for them um especially if they don't plan to mod it though of course I am going to try to mod it, and um, I'm probably going to do a side-by-side, -side, do a couple of different things with the ELF and the ELF Pro. I mean, the battery shouldn't make too much of a difference um, on the sound, so maybe we can compare, I don't know, different switches in each one or a different mod in each one and see um, how they come out sounding. But I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of the uh, K649 Pro elf pro from red dragon i do hope that you guys enjoyed if you have any questions about it or anything that you'd like to see me do when i come back to this keyboard please just leave it down in the comments below i do my best to answer as many comments as possible um, so until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on